I'll show you how to import and export high dynamic range PNG files, which are ideal for lossless interchange of HDR imagery in a broadcast workflow. If you're watching this video on a high dynamic range compatible display, you'll be seeing the bright HDR values as intended. On a standard dynamic range display, these will be tone mapped so you can still see at least a representation of them. I'll start with an HDR document I've created. It already has a 16x9 aspect ratio and 4K resolution, and it's in a 32-bit linear color format. This means everything is set up correctly for exporting to an HDR image format. I'll go to File, Export, and the format defaults to PNG, which is what I'm going to export to. The quickest way to ensure a correct export to HDR is to switch to a suitable preset. There are four to choose from. Two for PQ and two for HLG, with both full and narrow range options. PQ, Perceptual Quantizer, and HLG, Hybrid Log Gamma, are two different transfer functions for HDR content. Narrow and full range refer to how the range of RGB values in the image signal are used. Full range will use the whole signal for the values whereas narrow range will map them so there is headroom and footroom for signal overshoots. You may also know narrow range as legal range, limited range, or broadcast range. In most scenarios, you should choose the combination of the transfer function and range that matches your non-linear editor project settings. In Final Cut Pro, for example, you can check this in multiple locations, including the project settings dialog. For my example workflow, I'll choose the HLG full range preset. Then I'll click export. I'll choose documents for the file location and click save. The PNG can then be brought into your editing software and integrated into a project or sequence. My example sequence here uses Rec 2020 and HLG so the exported image is perfectly matched to this color space. The Affinity apps can also import PNG and TIFF files tagged as HDR. For example, I'll export a still image from this HDR timeline. I can use PNG or TIFF here. I'll choose PNG for now and save it to the Documents folder. Then I'll drag drop this PNG file into Affinity Photo and offer it to the top toolbar to open it as a separate document. The image opens and the HDR values are immediately visible. The document will be converted to a working pixel format of 32-bit linear with the tagged color space. In this case, BT2020. If you're not using an HDR display, you can still preview the entire dynamic range of an HDR image by using the 32-bit preview panel. I'll go to Window, 32-bit preview to enable this. And on the panel, I'll uncheck Enable EDR. This will simulate viewing the image on a non-HDR display. I can then use the preview exposure slider to bring the overall exposure down and see the brighter areas, or increase the exposure to see detail in the shadows. This is a non-destructive preview. It doesn't affect the color values of the document at all. If you wanted to actually affect the exposure of the image, you could reset this slider to zero, then add an exposure adjustment layer. This will let you make a linear adjustment of exposure in stops. For now, I'll close these documents and move on to a final example. You may want to take a raw image and develop it directly to an unbounded linear color format, so its pixel values remain scene referred and so it can be processed as an HDR image. To achieve this, I'll first need to change the raw output format. I can do this by clicking on the Assistant Settings button up here, then clicking through to the Develop Assistant via this button. I'll then change the raw output format to RGB 32-bit HDR. Leave Tone Curve set to Take No Action, then close both dialogs. I'll now import a raw file. 
As a basic step, I can push the exposure up. You'll notice that rather than overexposing, the highlight detail becomes brighter and more intense. This is because of the change to the raw output format. Instead of these bright values being clipped, they are now being mapped to the extended brightness range offered by HDR. The Develop Persona also gives you access to the 32-bit preview panel, which by default is collapsed down here. I can disable EDR to demonstrate what a huge difference visualizing the HDR values can make. I'll click Develop to perform the initial raw development and move to the main editing workspace. Now, if the goal is to integrate this HDR imagery into a compositing pipeline where further color grading and processing will take place, I may want to restrict my editing here to some basic retouching. I'll use the inpainting brush, for example, to remove some of the light reflections in the image. I might also use the clarity filter to enhance structure which helps to bring out some more texture around the bright areas. Now, I'll go to File, Export, and make sure I'm exporting to PNG. As well as using the presets, you can also configure the settings manually for HDR exports under the Advanced category. To do this, I'll make sure the pixel format is set to RGB 32-bit. Then I'll switch to the appropriate transfer function. BT709, which is a standard dynamic range transfer function, is also included for legacy purposes. I'll choose HLG, then move on to primaries. For HDR content, you'll want to use BT2020, but BT709 and other options are also included here for SDR content. Finally, I'll leave full range enabled then click Export, and I'll save this PNG file to the Documents folder. Looking at the exported file, we can see it has the appropriate color profile in its metadata. And when imported back into Photo, it looks identical to the working version I just exported from, so it has retained the correct HDR settings. And there we go. That was a look at importing from and exporting to HDR using PNG as an interchange format. Thank you for watching.